Hi everybody, I'm Mikey and this is part of the Advent Calendar series that is a crochet along. For those working on the crochet along with me, every few days a new video will be available to advance you to the next part of your project. There are 15 tutorials in all to complete today's project. If you're finding this and the crochet along is done, all videos will stay up indefinitely. In the more information of this video, you'll find a link to the playlist where all the tutorials will be listed in order for you to play along. The entire pattern is now available for free. For those who don't need a video, refer to the video description to get redirected to the pattern. So in the meantime, let's begin with today's tutorial to advance you to the next step and of course wishing you the very best of the festive season ahead. So let's move along in our project and today we're going to feature the pockets and there's a total of 24 pockets to get you to Advent right from 1 to 24. There's a total of 6 colors and the 6 colors are used only 4 times. So if you see the green, so 1, 2, 3 and 4. And so what I would highly recommend is that you do all of your counts first. So don't worry about doing any of the embroidery of the numbers onto anything. Get all of your colors completely done so that you have them. So just grab 6 balls of color that you want. Has the color choices that it shows you here as well. As as well as you can see a diagram of color. So if you'd like all your pockets to be the same color that's completely up to you and then what I would highly recommend is that you see the height of the letters or the numbers sorry, sorry what happens is that you want to get those to be consistent to be looking the same on each pocket. So you have to then really kind of look at each one of these and just make a determination and then just go from there. These are free formed but they're actually doing slip stitching from the back side of the pocket and let me just uh, flip it over and show you what it looks like on the back. So you can see each one of the pockets that are, are sewn into position. So you see this blue one right here. So you can see that it was sewn down the side and through the bottom here and the interior here has the pocket. So no matter what ornaments that you have you can just slide right on in and then when it comes to this particular date you can move it up and then move it to your tree for decoration just like this. So these pockets are really quite easy. They're just a matter of a rectangle and then get those done first and then I'll cover on how to do the embroidery. So without further ado let me show you how to start a pocket and get that done. So let's begin to do the pocket. All pockets are the same. Again there's 24 of them and we're going to create a slip knot to begin and we're going to chain a total of 9. So just put that onto your hook and chain 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So then we go across the chain. So second chain from the hook you're just going to single crochet. So just like the backdrop you're just single crocheting each one of the rows up until you get to the total height. So the total height that you need to get is um, row number 2 has to measure up to 3 inches. So the, the base here has to be 3 inches from the top or the bottom of this all the way to the top of the pocket. So let me just get you to the end. Show you how to turn around. The starting rows are always are kind of always the slow going but once you get it done and that first row done it's just easier from there on. So if you're experienced with crochet you'll know that already. So going right to the end just like you see. Okay so there's no more left so we just turn our work and then chain up one going into the same one that you just were in. So and just single crochet yourself back across. So every time you get to the end you just turn around chain 1 and single crochet back and forth and again you need a total height of 3 inches from the base here all the way to the top. And when I come back I'll have that done for you and then we'll cover on how to uh, get your numbers into position. So I'm just coming up to the end of my pocket just like you see here and what I want to do at the end of this is that I want to leave an extra long uh, tail so I can use that tail to sew it down to the project when I'm ready. So make sure you don't cut the tail too short. You want to be able to go around three of the sides. So you want to go down one, two and back up three. So just uh, leave an extra long tail for that particular moment. Okay it's better to uh, cut extra than it is to leave it too short and just pull it through the loop and then fasten that off. So that's good. So what I would do is worry about any of the loose ends later and then what we're going to do then is cover the numbers. So get all 24 of these done first and then we're going to come back and then we'll review on how to do the numbers. So we're now going to review on how to do the numbers. So let's just cover a few things. So this is using slip stitching technique and the yarn string is on the back side and you're pulling it through like a sewing machine as you're going to do it. So you pull it through and loop it, pull it through and loop it. You will notice that the numbers are really kind of free formed just like you see and but there's a consistency of the way the numbers look. For example when you see the number 4 it's kind of traditional that way so it's not just like a, an open top to that and the sixes are kind of closed. And so you want to kind of look at the sizing of these. You can be really quite free form with this as like there's consistency when you're going to look at this but it's a neat thing. So you're going to see that there's two different 
numbers here. This is using the same strand of yarn so you don't have to do a separate strand for this and this. It's just carried through across the back. So if I peel back the 15 you'll see it here is that there is just one strand and it's just carrying across from one section to the other. So on the other side it doesn't look so pretty and but on the front side it looks great. So when we go to operate this that we want to operate as if we're looking at it and we just have to eye it up and just kind of follow it. So I'd be consistent. See how that's three kind of stitch sections above? That's where it starts like as far as the height and you can use stitch markers too in order to do it as well as putting that in. So let's uh, do the number three just as an example. So I'm just gonna use a different color. You'll notice that all the, um, the numbers are in the same color and white's kinda harder to see. So let's just pretend that this is the front side of the project and you know I have no reason to think that it's not and I want to put the number three in. So I'm gonna grab another piece of yarn that is a different color and what we're going to do then is that we're going to uh, do the number three. So I've not done this before so hopefully wish me luck. So let's zoom in and see how to do it. So let's put the number three on the front side of this pocket. So what I want to do is just create a slip knot on the other uh, yarn that we want to use and we're not going to put it onto the hook first because what we want to do is that we need to treat this as if it's the top side of the project which it is. So I want to kind of just eye it up and how far I want to go. So I want to be consistent about this. It may take you a little bit of practice in order to do it but then what I want to do is that I want to go and pick somewhere here on the front and I want to go through the project and then pull this yarn up. So this yarn will stay on the back side of the project where all the ugliness will be and you're going to pull up just like you see here and then you're just going to dive right down to and then loop that yarn around and pull up. Okay and what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to form the number three. So I'm going to dive down in the next set, uh, stitch here. See so I'm forming the letter right in the or the number right in the front. So I'm going to dive in to the next section. So you have to go in a new hole each time you're going to do this and it may take you a bit of practice in order to get consistent with this concept as well. So remember Rome was never built in a day. Okay so if this is my base you can see I need a little bit of practice at it but if I was perfect all the time then it wouldn't be fun to follow <laughs> along with my antics would it. So what you have to just think about is that some of the numbers for example the number three will jet out in the middle here but you don't want to wreck that consistency of the way it looks. So you just want to just be kind of neat about it. I just pulled in a loose end and so now I want to jump back out. So I'm going to go back out to another section. So you can never do this concept if you're going in and out of the same hole. So you always have to move over slightly. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this tail that's bothering me. Get it out of my way. And the neat thing about this advent calendar it looks artistic so if you're perfect that would be no fun. You could also um, cut out felted letters if you wanted to. If you wanted to be a little more consistent and glue those onto the front of the pocket too. Nothing says yeah, you can't do that. Okay. So there is my number three. Okay. <laughs> it does look freeform but I'm okay with that. So to finish this off what I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to put this to the back side and pull, and pull through. So I went through the same hole and pulled through. And I'm just going to pull it through that existing loop that is on here. There we go. And I'm just going to trim this but I want to trim it enough that I can put a darning needle onto that if I want, wanted to. So I'm just going to pull up and then I'm going to put the hook from the behind and pull that string back. Okay. So on the back side that's what it looks like here. And on the front side it looks like this. So you can see it's a lot more consistent. So I'm actually pretty proud of myself considering that's my first <laughs> attempt ever. So what I want to do is that I want to take this loose end now and I want to hide this into the project in the behind. So you don't ever want to go through the project. Okay so just going through some fibers. I would stay close to the green where you are just in case it does do a peekaboo. And go in one and two and three. And I'm just going to check the front side. See I didn't go through it's good and then I can trim that and then that existing one that I had 
you want to really do trim it because you are going to take those ornaments out of the pockets and you don't want to pull up any loose ends either. So the starting tail that you started with you're just going to do the same thing. Just stay within the green section. So one, two, and three. So I probably highly recommend that you try numbers that are double digits so you get an idea on how much space and height that you're going to want for these ideas. And what I would like to do too is that you might as well get rid of the starting tail of the pocket. While you're here you got the darning needle out anyway and leave in that long strand um, for the one that will sew right directly to the project and then once these are all done I would then probably pin them down to your project and then sew them all into position at the same time. Obviously you'll sew them individually but you can lay it out better and you know it, it shows that the calendar is really quite um, um, symmetrical but you never know you might want to turn pockets in a re really kind of fun kind of way too. It's your art, it's your creativity you can do what you want right. So when you're ready then all you're just going to do then is you're going to take your number that you had okay just like you see here actually that's the wrong side. So you take your number and all you're just going to do is lay it out the measurements are given on the project but I would highly recommend that you actually um, my tension's a little bit tight too as you can see but you can stretch things out once it gets all relaxed and if your consistency all the pockets will be the same height or the same size. So you're just going to take that long st uh, tail strand you're going to go in your project and you're going to come back out and you're going to whip stitch yourself all across the round the three sides leaving the front pocket open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for you here and you can see it wasn't really that big a deal. Um, I was kind of nervous about it but I have uh, shown you a photograph of what this looks like and just be consistent and fun with it and you'll you'll have a good time. So get all your pockets and the next time we'll, we, when we come back we'll be doing the wreath and the wreath will be next and we'll start working on the ornaments together. There's a total of 12 of them. So until next time I'm Mackie on behalf of the crochet crowd.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.